Hey, hey folks, it's Jimmy Stewart here, hoping this is finding you all doing well, as usual. Today I want to continue my reviews and demos of the Positive Grid Spark 40 practice amp. Now, for those that have seen the first couple that I've done, the first was a review in demo when I first received the amp right out of the box, basically, uh, with the original app version in the original firmware version. And I did that review. Um, and then later on, I wanted to do an upgrade review, which I did. It wasn't really a review. It was a video of the issues I went through in doing the upgrade, the application upgrade, and the firmware upgrade. And for those that watched that and got through it, uh, you saw some of the issues I was having. The iPad was freezing up. I couldn't scroll through the tone cloud. I couldn't scroll through the amplifiers. Uh, it was freezing. I was getting some popping noises and some glitches going from one tone to the next in the tone cloud. Uh, there was a few things like that. And the amp was not responding the way it, it, it did in the first video. So the upgrade kind of wasn't an upgrade for me. But since then, and, and I've had a ton of suggestions and a ton of comments, and I really appreciate that. And some of the suggestions uh, I didn't do. Uh, one was to go back to Positive Grid and see if I could revert back to the original firmware. I didn't do that. What I ended up doing was I ended up completely deleting the, uh, the iOS app from my iPad. And then I took the amp and plugged it back into my Windows 10 computer and reapplied the firmware patch. Um, I just don't know if it didn't properly take the first time or what, but I did it and it came out and it said the, uh, the firmware was upgraded and it was successful. So uh, I don't know if that fixed anything, but when I reinstalled the upgraded app, uh, it seemed to clear it up. Um, it's not glitching anymore. I'm not getting the, uh, the freezing of the iPad as I did in that particular video. And I'm not getting the loud pops and, and noises and howls when I'm going from one tone, tone cloud uh, patch to the other. That seems to have cleared that up as well. So today I'm going to go through some of the other uh, aspects of the amp that I wanted to talk about. Um, show you some different things that I have found out since having it for a couple of weeks now and uh, use some different guitars so you can get some different ideas of how uh, humbuckers respond and how P90s respond and how some single coil like a Strat and or a Tele type of uh, guitar will sound with the different aspects of the amp. So let's go ahead and we'll get to it and hopefully everything will work out this time. Thanks. Okay, so first I wanted to show you a Tele style guitar. This is a Thin Line Firebird. Um, and I'm going to turn on my recording here on this, on the app. So I want to try the jam along feature on this and show you how that works, or how it currently works anyway. Um, So I'm going to go to create a jam here. I'm going to use the new girl, Sharon. get about eight bars in this. see what it does.
with a, a simple three chord type of thing, how we can create some of that background for you, bass and drums. Um, I'm going to go back here and create a jam again. I'm going to use Dave this time. I'm just setting a tempo. Let's start with him. Dave does. does a pretty nice job I guess um, here's the thing though and this is what uh, you know I didn't know what I expected from that particular feature but if you're a um, if you're a band you know and you're trying to learn a certain piece eight bars is fine it does generate like a chorus and a bridge or whatever but it's pretty much what you played and you can't capture you know you obviously you're not gonna be able to capture a full song uh, with a verse and bridge in eight bars so um, for certain sections of a song it'll work just fine uh, if your song is you know something like that where it's three chords and it doesn't change it'll work just fine but <clears throat> fairly limited so uh, let me get out of there real quick and um, here's another thing a little quirk I wanted to show you um, I thought that the app would take stream songs from iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. And it does. But it won't give you that same uh, chord breakdown, read the chords in a jam feature, if you're coming from a iTunes tunes, for instance. Now, here's the issue I have. If you're a band and you want to record and rehearse your own songs. For instance, I have a ton of my own songs and I have them loaded on iTunes in my playlist on iTunes. I also have a playlist in Spotify that has my own music on it. But if I tried to bring that up and play along with it, it won't allow me to. What it does is it wants to find that song on YouTube. And it doesn't make a difference what the song is. So for instance, let me show you on here. If I go to uh, Apple Music, now I have a ton of stuff in Apple Music, as you can see. Here, here, here's all my stuff as it brings it up. But one of the one of the things it does is it will only go. It reads down to E, I think, on here. See, and that's as far as it goes. It'll only go to E. It won't access the rest of my stuff. And I have thousands of songs on here. If I take one of my songs and try to play along with it, and let me see if I can find one here. Um, here we go. Here's Cordially. This is off my own album. This is me. Now see what happens? It wants to go to um, YouTube and find the song. 
and then it brings up a whole bunch of you know Jimmy Stewart and all that kind of stuff him and reading poems and what I have you and here's one of my reviews here here's no not I so it'll bring that up but it won't bring it up out of my own iTunes list it won't bring me up that actual song it'll search onto YouTube for the song kind of weird I don't know if it was designed that way or if that's just a glitch. And it doesn't list all my songs. It'll only go to E, and I can't get it to go any further beyond that. Here's another issue. So let's go to Spotify. Now, I have my own Spotify playlist. I'm a premium member of Spotify. And you can see up here where it says Jimmy's Original Tracks. Okay, so if I, t if I click that on, there's some of my songs. Okay, there they are. There's a bunch of them. If I bring up one particular song, um, let's just grab, uh, it doesn't really make any difference, but let's try Cordially again. So let's go to Cordially. Okay, so now it's bringing up my album cover here, Cordially, but I have no idea where this is from. I'm pretty sure if I try to play that, that's from YouTube. And it's not even my song. So I come to find out that there, actually somebody posted one of my tracks on YouTube in one of their channels, but it's not my song. So it won't, it won't grab that. And here, let me try another one from Spotify. Um, let's just try another. Here's another one. Um, all gone off of my off of my, one of my albums here. So let's in, select that one and import it. And again, it see it tries to read YouTube, so it's giving me a you know the Jimmy Stewart the actor reading poems. It's giving me cordially. Um, it simply won't bring it up. So I wanted to show you that. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be fixed or if it was ever intended for that. So it seems to me that the only thing that it will stream and analyze the music for at this point is uh, YouTube stuff. And then I'm getting that message as well when I record my screen. So I don't know if there's something going on between um, Apple's iOS and this iOS, but if I take the screen recording off, that sync error goes away. So I'm not sure. Let's go back to the amps here, and I'll give you just a couple of other tests with uh, with a couple of different guitars. Okay. <laughs> So that's the AC Boost. Uh, that's clean channel, by the way. Clean with just a little bit of drive in there. Um, let's go to the Tone Cloud. And let's check out Classic Marshall. As you can see, I'm not getting any buzz when I'm going to it. <laughs> Gilmore.
Now see, this is the most expensive guitar I own. This is a custom shop Fender 2005 NOS from a 65. And I'm getting a little bit of noise through that, so this is showing you the pickups. Now I have it on a high gain AC30 boost amp, but still. Turn these levels down a bit. So that's interesting. Okay. When that drive goes away, it clears it up quite a bit. drive back in. I like the P90s with it the best so far. I mean, uh, I honestly do. I think the P90s sound really good with it, um, which is what I enjoy playing most of the time anyway. So I'm a happy camper. So it sounds all right. And I'm not getting a ton of noise, which is good. Yeah, so anyway.
so folks were talking about and discussing the fact that you know they wanted to take this out and actually use it like a gigging type amp you know um it's a practice amp i don't think it would you could mic it you know and send it to the front of the house but you still have the issue the issue is you can't change your your settings by any type of foot switch you have to do it off the top of the amp so you know that would be awful awkward unless you're using that same sound and that same patch you know throughout the entire song well, I suppose you could do it. You could mic it and send it to front of house. Um, people are talking about sending the headphone out to an external speaker cabinet. Well, it's a headphone amp that's in here. It's it's not driven by this switch that's on the top of it, by the way. That's just for Bluetooth. It, the headphone uh, volume is off the regular volume controls. And when you do plug a headphone into it, it does disconnect the internal speakers. So. Let's give it a try and let's let's see if that'll actually work. It's not going to work. I don't have a powered speaker cabinet. So I'm going to send it to my my uh, 15 watt stage right mono price there and just to see if it works. So let's give it a try. I'm going to use a I'm going to use a just a standard three uh, mini plug stereo. Going from that stereo output into the input of my mono price and let's see what we got here comes. Now that's coming out of this amp now. control it from here. Let's drop it down. Let's see if we can get a clean sound out of it at least. Uh, That's pretty interesting. I've got the spark amp uh, pretty much in the middle here. Master at about six and a half. Uh, no modulation on, no reverb on. I'll put about 50%, right around five. <laughs> Thank 
It does work. Um, so that part of it works too. Now, I guess if you have a if you have a powered amp or a powered uh, speaker cabinet, you could plug it into that and just use you know the controls from here. I was using dual controls there. Um, makes it a little bit more complicated, but I guess you can uh, guess you could do that if you wanted to. Well, it still doesn't negate the fact that. You know, you, you're going to have to figure out a way, or hopefully Positive Grid will come up with a way to uh, to utilize their even their their Bluetooth um, foot switch. I think it's a BT4 or something like that. Uh, if they can incorporate that into this, um, I think that would be a huge step as far as playing it for more than just you know just practice. Um, might be very viable. We'll have to see what Positive Grid decides to do. So, I don't want to take too much of your time today, folks. I just wanted to go through those last couple of things to see if they actually worked, show you some of the quirks that is going on with the, uh, with the app itself. Uh, it's fairly limited in that jam along feature. You know, it will play the chords. It will, well, it will digest what you're playing and then give you a bass and drum uh, backing track. Uh, but it only takes, you know, the sample is eight bars, so you can't, you couldn't practice an entire song. At least I don't know how to figure out if you could do that. You'd have to do it in sections, and then, um, you know, it's pretty good at that. It it is good at the jam along feature, which I showed you in one of the other videos. There's a ton of those things out on on YouTube and what have you. Uh, so it does a good job with that for just playing along with songs that are as backing tracks. So it does a nice job of that. Uh, I can even give you one. Let me give you one just to...
anyway, gives you some idea of what you can do. You can have a lot of fun with it. It's a good little amp, folks. For the price, I think it's a good amp. Um, yeah, you got to iron out some of the, just a few of the uh, software issues. Uh, they have to iron out their delivery times. Uh, it's still taking, from what I'm, from what I'm hearing from other people. It took me six months. It's taken other people around the same amount of time, six months to receive it. Uh, it's really your call as to whether you'd like to wait. I'm hoping and I'm thinking that the time frame for delivery of the newer amps would be quicker. But um, with all the weird things going on in the world right now, um, I don't know. You know, it, it depends on whether Customs is behind, and I believe they are out in California on the West Coast. Uh, how long it's going to take? They do send a shipping in information. They'll send they'll send you a shipping notification once it ships from overseas. So you've got that time frame to get to the West Coast. You've got that time frame for it to clear through customs. You got that time frame to get it to FedEx and then FedEx to get it to you, depending on where you currently live. So um, that's about it for today. I'm going to leave it at that. It's the Spark 40 from Positive Grid. Uh, they've got a lot of bad press recently. I, I dogged them a little bit myself only because I, you know, that weight was a long one. Uh, I saw a lot of YouTubers, big YouTubers online doing demo reviews and thinking, well, how can they get an app and, you know, the people at a ordering room can't get one. So I've been told actually that uh, they sent around the same app. I'm not sure if that's true. Or they sent around a you know a group of amps that they had set aside for promotional purposes, and they actually had to send them back. Again, not sure if that's true, but that makes sense. Um, if you're looking and you're in the market for an amp like this, uh, you know it's it's well worth the uh, the money. Uh, is it worth your time to wait for it? That that's only a decision you can make. So um, I'll leave it at that. Again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't done so, please consider it. Um, and for right now, it's Jimmy Stewart saying so long. Thank you so much for watching. You all take care of yourselves and stay healthy. And we'll see you again next time, folks. Bye-bye for now.